Hi, I'm Kurt Lamon with Poly Vance, and with me here is our resident uh, poly propylene and all sorts of plastic repair expert, John Wilburn. He's got 25 years of experience doing plastic repairs, and he's going to show you how to fix headlight tabs today. Uh, if you're joining us on YouTube after the fact, um, you just missed the live session, so too bad about that. But uh, being that we are in a live session and those people that are on the line with us, uh, you do have the opportunity to ask questions as we go along. So please take advantage of that. You can type your uh, questions into the chat box and uh, Megan here, who's behind the uh, scenes, she will let us know if there's uh, something that we should address immediately or we will definitely um, address all of the questions at the end of the session. And we'll leave room for Q&A at the end as well. Uh, just to give you an idea of the agenda, we're going to start with uh, a few slides just to kind of set everything up and get every, everybody thinking about uh, headlight tab repair. And then the main uh, event here, of course, is going to be John. He'll be doing uh, his expert repairs on a broken headlight tab live. And we're going to do a full repair on one tab, excluding the cosmetics. We'll do a little bit of cosmetics. On another tab, we'll show you an, an initial um little view of the cosmetic repair process although we don't really have the time in this session to go through the entire cosmetic repair process that does honestly if you're going to be doing a, a headlight tab that's visible the cosmetic part of it will take most of the time so again we are uh, talking about headlight tab repair today and why are we talking about headlight tab repair number one headlight tabs are easily damaged and, uh, you know, they'll often break off when the core support or the upper rail moves. The light itself may not be damaged, just the mounting tabs are broken. And I don't need to tell you guys that headlights are very expensive nowadays. Uh, gone are the days you could go down to uh, the auto zone and pick up a sealed beam for uh, $12 and put it in there. Uh, these headlights are well over $1,000 many, many times, and it could make the difference between uh, a total loss and a repairable vehicle at that point. So I don't need to, I'm preaching to the choir here. We all know headlights are expensive and tabs can be repaired. There are certain types of damage, obviously, that are not repairable. Number one among those is that obviously cracks and holes in the lens itself. It's just no way to repair uh, polycarbonate, clear polycarbonate lens by welding it and have it look original again. Uh, you're going to be able to see that crack. Uh, if it's an older vehicle and it's maybe a self-pay deal, uh, maybe the vehicle owner would be okay with a small crack being repaired just to seal it back up. That's possible. Uh, but for like a late model vehicle for insurance quality, we would not uh, recommend that. Uh, also, if there's obvious in, like, any water or debris inside the housing, you cannot get, uh, can't remove that. So uh, do not repair a light with those problems. And finally, if there's obviously non-functioning non optics or electronics. So during the estimating phase, I think it's important to test the light for proper operation. If it does work, if it seems to work uh, properly, then you can consider repairing the broken tabs. As far as repairable damage, uh, broken tabs. Obviously, uh, most of the tabs, what we call cantilever tabs, they, they stick out like a diving board. And if they get a little bit of stress, they'll pop off. So those are the types of tabs we are looking for to repair. Also, there's some tabs, if it breaks off into the housing itself, again, as long as the housing doesn't show any contamination or, or water ingress, um, you should be able to repair that and the housing as well. And if there's a torn mounting hole, uh, you can repair that. We are going to be talking about repair process with a nitrogen plastic welder. So whenever you're fusion welding plastic, you need to identify what type of plastic you're working with. Headlights are unique in that the, all of the ID symbols are usually clustered together in one area molded into the housing. And as you can see there, we got this, the housing circled. It's polypropylene PP and TD30, which means it's got a 30% talc filler, which thankfully talc filler increases the, um, brittleness of it so when it does break it breaks off very clean it doesn't stretch so you could put usually put the tab right back in position and you can't even see the crack you normally right above the housing you see lens 
PC, polycarbonate, uh, PBT. So there's lots of different plastics that are used in a headlight. We are mainly concerned with the uh, housing itself. This is a simple graphic to show you what tabs are easy and what are more difficult. So if you look at the top, it's a, if it's a hidden tab when you open the hood, or if it's a visible tab. Uh, and then on the left side, if the tab is complex or if it's simple. So that first quadrant on the upper left there, if it's a simple tab that's hidden, yeah, no problem. Let's go ahead and weld that thing up and, and you don't have to worry about the cosmetics. Uh, if it's a complex tab and it's hidden, that'll take a little more time. But again, because there's no cosmetic work involved, that makes it easy. So if the tab is on the bottom of the headlight, again, you don't, you don't see it when you open the hood, uh, that'll be a really easy one to do. Uh, you're going to be doing the welding process, but then don't worry about the cosmetics. You just want a good, strong, functional repair that gets that headlight back on the car. Uh, things are more difficult when the tab is visible. If you have a simple tab that is visible, you're going to need to do some body work. And it's kind of, you know, like typical body work, uh, sanding, uh, priming, filling, sanding, priming, filling, and so forth until you have the look that you want. So it's just on a much smaller scale. So that is pretty, it's not difficult to do, but it does take time to do the cosmetics on those simple visible tabs. The ones that are the most difficult to do are the visible ones that have complex features like waffles or ridges and things like that. That is, again, that's going to be the, the I guess, the most difficult one. We do have some solutions to make those easier now. and. That is what John is going to show you today with our Tab Magic putty, molding putty, that does make it a little easier to get a cosmetic uh, appearance on the complex tabs. Uh, this is a, just a photo showing you, say, for example, the crack on the left side there. You see the crack running through the waffles. You know, if it was a visible tab, it doesn't look OEM, so it may not be acceptable. If that was a hidden tab, no problem. You can do that all day long. However, you know, nowadays, if it was a visible tab with our Tab Magic Putty, you could get a decent looking repair on something like that. And that's what we're going to show you here today. Repair Decision Flowchart. If, you, if you, any of you want to see this uh, PowerPoint uh, after the fact, you can email training at polymats.com and we can get you a copy of it. But anyway, to looking at each one of these three decision factors, okay, we start off, we got a broken tab. The first question to ask is, is the tab hidden? Or is the vehicle owner okay with the tab not looking original? And if the answer to that, either of those questions is yes, go ahead and repair it. Okay, say the answer is no. Say it's a visible tab, for example. Next question to ask, can you weld the top and refinish to original appearance? If you can, repair it. If you can't, go to the next uh, question. The question is, can you do a one-sided repair and just weld the back and the sides? And that's kind of the strategy we use on the complex tabs, and that's what John is going to show you today. If the answer to that is yes, then you can repair it. But if no, we would say just don't repair that tab. All right, now we get to the meat of the project here. We're going to show you a uh, live video using uh, doing a repair on a headlight tab. It's broken off using the Tab Magic Putty. And John, I've been talking this whole time. You haven't even said anything. So why don't you introduce yourself? Sorry about that. Well, I'm about, I'm about to. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to let John take over from this point. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, so we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, take a look at this tab. And I've got, I've got the detail camera. So I'm going to be doing the close-ups here for everybody. All right, so what we have here is a cantilever tab with uh, some louvers on it here. And as Kurt mentioned earlier, with the uh, with the talc in these tabs, they usually break off nice and clean. And as you can see, that lines up right on nicely. So what we're going to do is apply a couple of staples uh, in both sides of this tab to hold it in position. And then we'll mix up some Tab Magic putty and uh, apply it in these grooves so that when we weld the back side of this tab, we want to weld as deep as possible. Um, that Tab Magic putty is going to prevent these little louvers from uh, distorting or folding over. So uh, I'll go ahead and grab the stapler and attach that tab. Okay. And while John's getting that, I just want to mention the uh, whenever you have a broken tab, it is really, really important to save that 
tab that's broken off. It's really going to be impossible to recreate a tab like this if you're not. Uh, well, that that one would be very impossible. There are some simpler ones that John will show you a little bit that you can recreate from scratch, but uh, always keep that tab if if you've got it. Yeah, a lot of the times uh, when they when they break off, they're still bolted to the radiator support. Uh, so uh, you know, it's just a matter of making sure when the car is being disassembled to hold on to that tab, especially if it's a complex tab. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and melt a staple in the side here. And we're putting the staples in the side again because we're going to V groove deep on the back side and weld uh, and try to do all the welding from the back. So I don't want these staples in the way uh, while I'm V grooving. I don't want to V groove deep on the back side and get down to the staples and cut them in half. So we'll put the staples on the outside edge. I'll accommodate you, John. All right. Just melting the staple about halfway deep into the tab. All right, so now our tab is fixtured in position. And I will grab the Tab Magic molding putty. And this is a silicone rubber two part. So when you need the part A and part B together in a one to one ratio, uh, they will actually create a very flexible, heat resistant uh, mold of whatever you're trying to take a mold of. It's an equal part mix, so I'm just going to get a pinch. A little pinch will do you. Yep. Yeah, for this particular small tab here. <clears throat> equal parts mix. Let's see. That's pretty close. Mm -hmm. Now we'll take and knead that together. A nice blend. You want to keep blending it, kneading it together until there aren't any streaks of uh, white material visible. And again, this, this is necessary uh, for uh, tabs with these little louvers and waffles. Um, but for just a, a, a flat tab with, uh, with no detail to it, um, it's not necessary to use this, but it comes in very, very handy on these complex tabs like this. And I've also found this, because it's a uh, high uh, temperature resistant uh, material, when it's uh, cured, uh, I've, I've used it to actually set up and um, recreate um, torn, weird shaped torn mounting holes on bumpers and, and it you can actually uh, nitrogen weld right over it and it won't affect the uh, rubber. So I'm just gonna tear some off and press it to mold to the shape of our tab. And I'll also take a little extra and wrap it around my staples here, and that will help keep the tab magic in place. It's grabbing those staples, and it's not going to allow that tab magic to, you know, try to release off of the tab while I'm repairing it. So I'll just take and wrap a little extra on the side here, right over the staples. And that is going to help hold that tab magic in position. 
And if you uh, do a, a lot of the same headlight, uh, you can actually reuse this material. It's uh, you peel it off and reuse it. All right. Now we will have to uh, we have to allow this tab magic to set up. Um, just take a few minutes before we can start welding, but we can go ahead and do the prep work on it, which we'll need to do some V grooving on the back side of the tab before we begin welding. So I'm going to go ahead and release the headlight from our cradles here. Well, I'm thinking of it, John, uh, just, uh, you can see everybody that John is using the, uh, Convenient cradles that are a feature of our 6077 Bumper Mate 3 plastic repair workstation. These uh, cradles will hold kind of odd shaped parts like uh, headlights, uh, overflow bottles, uh, air boxes, things like that. So, yeah, you can just rotate those and move. So, John will arrange those uh, things to fit the headlight uh, nicely for this work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this works great for headlights, uh, fluid reservoirs, any type of small parts um, that just won't sit on a table flat. Um, you can take, set it in these cradles and then strap it down with the bungees. Like so. Right. All right. So I've got it flipped around and around the side. Is that going to work for you, Kurt? Oh, yeah. Whatever it needs. Okay. Good. Right. We get a close up of that before we get started. So you can see the crack running across there and the green putty. Of course, the staples holding it in on the sides there. So. Yep. So what we're going to do here is V groove, of course, across the crack itself. And since it's on an edge right here, we're also going to T our welds right here on both sides. And I have a little bit of overhang on this side. So I need to remove this tab magic, get that out of there. There we go. Using a pointed carbide grinding drill.
All right, so I made a uh, nice deep V groove along the crack itself so that when we melt the welding rod into the crack, it's going to push through and melt all the way to our molding putty. And uh, the V grooves on each side didn't have to be quite as deep. We're just using those for reinforcement uh, welds on the edges. So that is V grooved and ready to weld. And Our molding putty has set up, so we're good. And we have identified this headlight housing, which most headlight housings are as polypropylene plastic. So I'm gonna to come to my welding rod box here and select the right profile, the correct profile for this particular repair, but polypropylene is what we wanna use. And I have selected the round and narrow ribbons for this repair. And welding something like this, I want to adjust the flow on my welder down. Um, I had it set a little high for doing a a tear and a bumper, but I need to adjust the flow down because I'm working in such a tight area. So I've adjusted the flow on my nitrogen welder down to about uh, nine liters per minute. So I just barely have nitrogen flowing out of this. Uh, and again, the reason is, is I don't want to over melt uh, my little tight area that I'm working on here. So we'll go ahead and preheat the welding rod or pre-melt. Starts turning shiny right there at the tip. Let's go ahead and melt the headlight tab. Once they're both melted, I can make contact. So what I'm doing here is pushing the welding rod deep into that V groove to make sure that I penetrate all the way through to the putty on the other side. So uh, basically I'm welding the front and back at the same time here, or getting both sides welded just from the back side. Wrap a little welding rod around the edge here. Come back and lay a reinforcement cross stitch. And all nitrogen welds look a little messy and uh, a little funny until you do the smoothing and the shaping and a little sanding on it. And then 
you know, you can get the appearance to where it looks like, you know, nothing ever happened. Right. Very important though, during this process to make sure you melt both the base material and the rod, right, right John? Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Make sure both those plastics are melted at the same time. Yep. The angle of the welder and angle of your welding rod uh, plays part in that. So yes. If you do not get both plastics melted as they're joining together, uh, you will not have as strong and effective weld as you could. Um, your tab can end up breaking off on you. So now um, I'm going to go ahead and cap this with the uh, narrow ribbon here, which is just a little bit a uh, little bit wider than the uh, the round there. So I've got my T's done, my cross stitches. So let's preheat the tip of my welding rod. The tab has started cooling a little bit, so I want to go ahead and make sure it's melted. And And that is the final weld on the back side. So I'm going to come back and blow nitrogen over the whole repair and then use the airless welder to shape it. And the, the, the reason for the V groove is, is so that once we smooth this and shape it down flat, there is, uh, well, partly, the reason for the big groove is so that when we come in with this airless welder and shape and smooth flatten this welding rod down it doesn't thin it out to where there's no strength left with it so i'm going to smooth this down flat but we still have plenty of welding rod down in the v grooves that is holding the tab together If we would have just came in and just laid welding rod right over the crack after smoothing it down, there wouldn't be much welding rod there holding the tab on. So the group pre preparation, proper preparation is uh, very important here, as with any repair, but especially when you're doing a one sided repair, basically. Yes, yes, sir. And in some cases, you will need to let the tab cool and then come back and reshape because at a certain point, the plastic will just kind of start flip-flopping back and forth. So you can take your air and cool it or let it cool naturally. And uh, I also want to mention too, uh, when you heat plastic, it tends to move sometimes even with it stapled on. So before it you cool it, take a look at your tab and make sure that it is still aligned properly. Make sure it's sitting exactly where it needs to sit. And mine is, it did not move. So I'm just gonna blow some air on it. And this is just melting and cooling of the plastic. So there's no curing that, uh, that is happening here. It's just heating, melting, and then cooling down. Once it's cooled, it's ready to move on to the next step. And now we are cool to room temperature. Right. 
Let's go ahead and get the headlight back right side up. And I am going to flip it back around and do some sanding and shaping on the back side. But I want to go ahead and remove my staples and my tab magic at this point and uh, take a look at my tab and make sure that I don't need to go back and do any more welding on the back side. All right. All right, let's go ahead and remove our tap magic and I will need to use a razor to slice it free from the staples. And as you can see, that molding putty, of course, did exactly what it was supposed to do, molded to the little louvers in there, and did not disfigure or distort our movers. So the tab magic did exactly what it was supposed to do. All of this still looks nice and clean. Um, and with just a, a slight visible hairline crack, which is what we're about to do next, we're, we're going to uh, use the airless welder and do a little shaping in there. But uh, honestly, that right there, as far as strength and appearance goes, I mean, that's that's that looks pretty good as it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's uh, one of the strategies we normally employ when we're working on a visible complex tab, uh, because uh, doing a one side weld avoids the need to go over that uh, top side with uh, the welder again, which would really be hard to uh, restore those features again after that. Mm -hmm. What you doing now, John? I'm removing the staples. Just gonna reheat them and pull them out. Huh? Reheat them, pop them right out. Okay. You could leave those in there if you wanted to, but uh, in our experience, it sometimes makes it difficult to uh, restore the cosmetic appearance when you're doing some body work on these things that's exactly right kurt uh if you were going to do some body work on a uh on a tab uh these do get in the way sometimes if you leave them in and um these staples if this tab was under pressure enough to break that tab these little staples aren't going to save the day and prevent that tab from breaking again um, that weld is much stronger than this actual staple is. So it's really not necessary to leave the staples in. They're not helping that much as far as strength. Mm. All right. Yeah, that looks, that looks really nice. So what you could do here is take your airless welder. Along that little hairline crack and just barely touch it. Just slightly run the welder over that crack. And for that middle louver there. We've got our blockhead tip here that fits nice. New welding tip from Polyvance is the 6032 blockhead tip for getting into tight spaces like this. Mm -hmm. Right. 
now that we've got that smooth, I'm going to do just some quick final touch up work here. And uh, we'll move on to finishing out that next tab. <laughs> We'll flip that back over, uh, clean the back side up. So what I did was I used a Rolock disc to grind off the slag and then use 80 grit on a sander to get rid of those uh, sanding gouges, sanding scratches, excuse me. Now I'm gonna take my nitrogen welder, blow some heat over my repair. And remelting that uh, fuzz. Yep, smoothing that fuzz down. Just making it look a little nice and neater there. Backside repair complete. Let's, let's get in a little close up on that. Yeah, let's take a look at that front side there. All right. And as you can see, if if, if you were going to do any body work at all, which uh, I mean, I feel like that looks pretty good uh, without doing any body work. But if you were gonna do any at all, um, it wouldn't take much, uh, but we're about to do some refinishing and body work on this, uh, on this other tab over here to kind of get into a little more detail of what it takes. Well, John, actually uh, looking at the clock right now, we wanna keep this thing within an hour. So why don't we uh, talk about some of those other, uh, right. pull, pull that one light you've got, you've got a tab that has been pretty much finished out already. Let's uh, take a talk about that one first. Yes, that, sir. This one here, as a, this one that John had previously done, the full backside repair, if, if you can see the detail on that. Mm -hmm. And then the front side used the, had used the Tab Magic putty. And uh, yep. it's kind of hard to see the details. Uh, it's, it, now you had just done this, John, with uh, just the smoothing and sanding. You haven't done any priming or filling or anything on this one, right? None at all. Okay, so actually, I'm, I haven't even done any sanding on this one. We welded the backside, popped the Tab Magic putty off, and used the blockhead tip to get in here and do a little shaping. Right on. In okay. These little squares. That is all we've done right here. Is done a little bit of smoothing and. Okay, good deal. So to actually get that to look like the original, it's going to require some kind of fine detailed. Uh, Body work, primer, maybe just a little bit, but uh, I, I guess it's really up to the, you know, the the, the standards. Uh, it it looks really good. It may just need a little bit of uh, extra work to uh, to get it looking uh, perfect again, huh? That's it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but I'm I'm telling you, in a lot of cases, uh, I, I do these in collision centers all the time, and a lot of cases, you know, they are absolutely happy with that. 
um, do it in front of insurance companies and body shops alike. Good. Mm. What about that black one? You had, that was the one we were going to re do, yes. do a little body work on. This yes. one, uh, okay. This one here, we. Uh, what would be your strategy here, John, on this one? Now, it, it, it also describe what you did on this one. All right. So um, the tab magic uh, would not be necessary on a tab like this. And what we had here was a tab. This tab was broken off like this. Mm -hmm. So just the end of the tab knocked off. So we recreated that from scratch. We grooved it, prepped it properly, and applied a piece of aluminum tape for uh, as a platform to support it. And we distilled this in and built it up with welding rod and got our platform tab, if you will, uh, there. And then to get this little lip on this outside edge, we used the 07 welding rod and wrapped it mm -hmm. around this edge. We just welded it right around and made that lip on the edge right there. Okay, great. Yes, sir. Okay, that was uh, the actual end of the tab was missing. So uh, you recreated it from scratch. But I, I would say that would be a little more advanced um, technique than a lot of technicians would, starting, starting off at least, they probably wouldn't be able to do something like that. But, you know, after you've played with it for a while and uh, gotten used to using the welder and repairing headlight tabs, I'd say maybe it is possible. It, yeah, it's it's definitely doable uh, with more experience. Okay. And that would be something, since it doesn't have any waffles or louvers in there, it'd probably be easier to refinish that one, right? To get... Absolutely. Okay. That's, uh, so that would take some amount of time. I mean, the uh, for all of you who may have your uh, stopwatches on in the audience, um, the, the welding process... Uh, it's probably, you know, eh, part of it, but uh, the, the refinishing process to make it look original again is uh, pretty lengthy in some cases. So you need to account for that. And this is one right here that is completely finished out. So this tab did not require any uh, filler, uh, any primer or anything. We were able to repair this tab. And again, it was broken off just like this. The end was missing off of it, and we fabricated and built uh, the end of this tab back on. And sanding and shaping with the welder um, is all it took to get this tab this close. And just all of you need here is a little more prep work to get the primer and paint down, huh? That's right. And we'll take a look at the back real quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we used that, uh, we used uh, Polyvance R05 TPO welding rod, which has got a very similar color to this gray. So it looked really nice. And you know what, while we're standing here, Kurt, just real quick, if anyone is wondering, the, the strength of these tabs, because we are fusion welding this tab back on, uh, not adhering it back to it with an adhesive, it's actually fused back to the headlight. So the strength is there. So this this headlight is just as strong um, as a tab that was never broken before, this headlight tab. Right. Yes. Yeah, and then a lot of times if it's a, if it, the hidden on the backside, if you can actually increase the thickness, if, it's, if there's no adjoining part that would, uh, to keep you from doing it, you could actually th uh, thicken it up on the backside and perhaps make it even stronger than the original if necessary yes mm. yeah and so that would come into play i guess kurt if you had like uh, one of those long really long tabs that when you needed to really build it up in the back for for extra strength because some of these headlight tabs uh the cantilever tabs some of them are you know can be four to six inches long right uh, i've seen them like that what's that last headlight there john uh, so about this that. one is actually just one that is rough in of uh what we just showed you guys Okay, so this is with the natural welding rod on the gray headlight, and you can kind of see where the welding rod is. So, had a nice, uh, just roughed in, just just welded, not even not even shaped really. Just nope. this is this hasn't been shaped or anything. This is just welding rod melted into the headlight. Okay, you can see on the back side where that yep clear the white welding rod joins the headlight tab. There, you can see the difference in the color where the white meets the gray. Yep. Okay. Nice repair. Getting close to the end of this uh, here. So we want to just go ahead and make a couple other announcements. Yeah, if anybody's got any questions, please uh, just type them into the chat box. We'd be happy to answer any questions you might have at this point. 
Uh, and before we get back to the live, I just wanted to let you know that uh, Poly Vance not only has the best plastic repair products in the industry, but we also have the best plastic repair training. And we have several options for you. First of all, the online plastic repair training that's available is we have two of these that are um, approved under the ICAR Industry Training Alliance Program. That'd be the PR03, PR03 Headlight Tab Repair Course, which is pretty much all what we covered just today, except we go through eight different repairs, not just one. Uh, we also have the EPR-01 Estimating Plastic Repair Course, which uh, teaches you about general, more, more on that one for bumpers, uh, bumper repairs. Both of those, again, are approved uh, under the ICAR program for uh, continuing education credits. We also have a couple of hands-on courses that you might be interested in. The PR01 Intro to Nitrogen Plastic Welding course is something that we can deliver in your shop. It's about a three-hour course. Each session uh, is for up to three technicians, and it does teach everyone five basic hands-on techniques with the nitrogen plastic welder. Also, a new course for us is a PR05 texture refinishing course. Uh, nowadays, with the uh, part shortages that are out there in the industry now, a lot of people who would not have considered doing texture repair before are now open to the idea. And we have got the product and the hands-on training that we can deliver in your shop. Finally, Polyvance University is a new offering for training with uh, Polyvance. And we uh, have got a couple of courses there. The, the basics of plastic repair course is an outstanding course for somebody who has absolutely no idea what plastic repair is. Uh, you can take somebody that just got uh, came over from Dunkin' Donuts last week, and they can get up to speed in one hour and know the techniques and the tools that are required to do plastic repair. And that is available not only in English, but in Spanish as well. So take a look at that course. Um, the Nitrogen Plastic Welding One course is our newest offering. It's about an hour long uh, virtual course. We got Spanish coming soon on that, not available just yet, but it will go through the basics of nitrogen plastic welding, including preparation, um, degrooving. What else there, John? We do yeah. uh, preparation of the plastic, degrooving the, the correct tools uh, that you'll need to do it with, and just the, uh, pla the nitrogen plastic welding process more than anything. Right. Um, all of the variables that are involved in nitrogen plastic welding, which are very, very important to, uh, being able to get the most effective weld possible. Right on. And, uh, before today, these courses had a nominal cost of $15 for the basics and $25 for the nitrogen plastic welding. But today we are announcing for the rest of the year, we're doing a promotion on the Polyvance University courses. Both of these courses will be free until the end of the year. So please take advantage of that while we've got it free. Take a look and see what the benefits would, of this product would be for your, uh, for your staff. And I really think that, uh, again, if you have a new technician or somebody you're training to become a technician, or maybe a, an adjuster who's not really familiar with plastic repair, or even some office management who, uh, you know, we've found in the past that if the office uh, and the estimators are aware what it can be done for plastic repair, the plastic repair percent goes up. So uh, let's get together and uh, just uh, go to polyvance.com and you can get some more information about that or you can email training at polyvance.com. And there's our final screen. If uh, Anybody has any questions, uh, we'll be happy to take them right now. We've got uh, a few minutes left in the hour. Um, and if we've done a great job, John, nobody's gonna ask any questions because uh, we've got, uh, we had everything covered. Uh, seems like we are in that situation. So we, uh, if you do have any questions after the fact, again, please just email info at polybance.com or training at polybance.com. Sounds like we have a question, okay. Okay, uh, did you, uh, the question was, did you mention some refinish situations? We did not have time to cover the refinish process in this uh, video. We did discuss it though. Yes, we did. And uh, as far as the refinishing, it's just, uh, it's the same as any other plastic. If you're working on a bumper, um, the refinishing uh, products and such are the exact same. You would uh, prep the surface, use adhesion promoter, use filler, 
uh, and primer to refinish it back to OE appearance. Um, so the process and products are the exact same, uh, just on a smaller scale, as Kurt mentioned earlier. And uh, keep in mind also that uh, headlight housings are almost always made of polypropylene, which is considered a problem plastic for adhesion. So whenever you're putting a, a coating, be it a primer or a filler on raw polypropylene, you do need to use an adhesion promoter first. We've got one called Plastic Magic, and we also have a brushable one called uh, Filler Prep. And that seems to be the only question. Well, yeah. And while we're talking about refinish real quick, um, John, back me up. It really depends on how uh, complex the contours of the surface are. That's why the Tab Magic Putty is important to absolutely minimize the distortion on the front side of the, of the complex tab to get down and actually refinish everything. Uh, it's gonna take some time. And we, again, we didn't have time to go through that in this um, video today. But uh, like John said, it's very much the same as doing any sort of plastic refinishing, uh, adhesion promoter, filler, uh, primer, sanding, repeat the process until you're happy with the way it looks and put some paint on it. So uh, keep that in mind. It's not, uh, not completely uh, easy to do, um, being that uh, a lot of headlights are very expensive. Um, I would encourage all of our friends in the insurance industry to provide some extra time to encourage your shops to do these types of repairs and to do the refinishing properly. So um, I would like to mention, Kurt, we also we have a few videos uh, on YouTube uh, for headlight repair, the welding and the refinishing uh, of the headlight. So if you're interested in that, we have kind of a, uh, a playlist of uh, assortment of videos on YouTube that you can look up and watch. Right on. Yeah, we do have, actually, we've got the industry's largest library of plastic repair uh, videos on our YouTube channel. If you haven't uh, seen it before, look up Polyvance on YouTube. We've got well over 100 different how-to videos on plastic repair. And uh, yeah, like John says, we do have uh, some on headlight refinishing and repair. So, Looks like that's it for the questions. Thank you very much for your attention. We wrap this up just on time. As promised, thanks again uh, to John for, uh, we want to, glad we could share his knowledge with uh, you and the audience. Uh, again, if you're watching this on YouTube later on, um, again, browse our other videos and you'll see some more headlight repair and bumper repair and all sorts of plastic repair videos all over Polyvance uh, at YouTube. Thank you. Thank you.